The following table is a probability distribution for X, where X represents the number of adults who have completed a bachelor's degree or higher out of a random sample of five adults selected from a community in California. What is the mean and standard deviation for the number of adults out of a random selection of five adults from this community that have a bachelor's degree or higher? Would it be unusual to have four or more adults with a bachelor's degree or higher out of a sample of five adults? All right, so when I read the problem, it's very clear that they're asking me to calculate a mean and a standard deviation. And then based on the layout of the data here, how it's displayed, I'm guessing that I have to use those formulas from my formula card. So let's go ahead and find the mean and standard deviation for a probability distribution, for a discrete probability distribution, in fact, because we can see that the x values here are discrete. Okay, so we're gonna have to calculate a couple of columns here. The first would be x times p of x. We're gonna need to figure out that column. Then we're gonna need to do the column x squared times p of x, right? So the column notation is gonna tell you what has to be performed, right? So we're going to need to multiply all the x values times the corresponding p of x values. And then we're going to need to do the same thing but square the x's before doing the multiplication. And that'll give us the two columns we need to perform the calculations at the end. Okay, so let's begin first with you know, the basic x times p of x. So if I do zero times this number, I will of course get zero because zero times anything is zero. And then one times anything is itself. So of course I'll know the next one would be 0 0.360, right? And then I'll have to do two times 0 0.309, which will give you 0 0.618, right? 0 0.618, so on and so forth. If I do three times 0 0.132, I'll get 0. 396, and then dot, dot, dot. I'm gonna speed it up a little bit by using our calculator. Okay, so let's do four times 0 0.028. And we do that, we get 0.112, and then five times 0 0.003. Okay, so 0 0.112 and 0 0.015, 112 and 0 0.015. Okay, so that's our x times p of x column multiplied out. Now let's do the x squared times p of x. So before we actually perform the multiplication, we need to square the x's. So we're gonna do x squared times p of x. Of course, the first one will be zero squared, which is zero times the p of x value. I'll get zero again, right? And it's the same here. If I square one, one times itself is one, and then one times anything, of course, is itself. So we'll just copy that 360 down again, right? Okay, let's do the rest in the calculator just to make sure that we don't make any errors and we can speed things up. If I square two, don't I get four? I do, so I can say two squared times, and then I have to write the P of X result, so 0 0.309, 0 0.309. And that gives me 1.236. And then I'll do three squared, that's of course nine, but I'll type it in, three squared times 0 0.132, 0 0.132 get my answer, and then we'll have four squared, so 16, or we can just type it in, four squared times 0 0.028, 0 0.028, right? Let's write those down, so we have 1.236, and then our final calculation, five squared, or 25, times 0 0.003. Okay, and I get 0 0.075 in that instance. Okay, now, from here, what we're gonna do is add all of these values together in the column that says x times p of x to get a total. We'll do the same for the x squared times p of x. We'll add all these to get a total. So let's go ahead and do that. So I have 0.360 plus 0.618 plus 0.396 plus 0.112 plus 0 0.015, and we get 1.501, 1 1.501, and then we'll have 0 0.360 plus 1.236 plus 1.188 plus 0.448 plus 0 0.075. So we get 3.307. Okay, so we have our two results. We're gonna name these results now. 
This one here we're going to call the mean because that's the sum of x times p of x, which is otherwise defined as the mean. So remember, whenever you do the x times p of x column and you add it and get a total at the bottom, you found the mean. So that's our mean. Okay, this quantity is just the sum of x squared times p of x. That's all it is. It doesn't have any other special meaning. That's what it is. It's just the sum of that column. Okay, but we will need that value to calculate our standard deviation. So we've already calculated the mean. Let's do the standard deviation. The standard deviation is going to be defined as the square root of the sum of x squared times p of x minus the mean quantity squared. So we actually have these quantities. This isn't anything more than the sum we just found there. So we're just going to have 3.307, right? And then minus the mean, which is 1.501 squared. All right, and then from there, it's just a matter of using our calculator to do this part of it. So we'll have 3.307 minus 1.501 squared. And that's out to six decimal places. Now let's take the square root. So we'll do the square root of that answer. And we have our standard deviation. Our standard deviation is approximately 1.03. All right, so we're going to round these off a little bit closer for the work we're going to do next. For the next question, it asks in the problem, would it be unusual to have four or more adults with a bachelor's degree or higher out of a sample of five adults? So let's look at the probability first. Four or more would be these two, right? If you added those together, you get essentially 3.1%, right? So 0 0.031 as a decimal. 0 0.031 is 3.1%, and that's less than 5%. That's arguably unusual, right? So less than 5% of the time that would happen. So that's pretty unusual. That's one way to answer the question. Look at the probability and talk about it in that respect. Another way to think about it would be to say, okay, let's write down our mean. We're going to round it to one decimal place, 1.5. I think that's appropriate here. And the standard deviation, we'll round that to one decimal place, so we'll call it 1.0, right? So there's our mean and standard deviation. So what you could do is you could actually form the following interval, the mean plus and minus two standard deviations, right? So you might remember we had a rule of thumb that said if you took the mean and subtract two standard deviations from it, took the mean and added two standard deviations to it, you would get an interval that captures a very large amount of data, certainly the majority of the data, right? So if we take the mean, we're going to have 1.5 minus 2 times 1. Well, 2 times 1 is just going to end up giving you 2, right? And then the mean 1.5 plus 2 times 1. And if we work that out, we're going to finally get the answer what? Well, if this is negative 2, then we'll end up with negative 0.5. 1 and a half minus 2 is negative 0.5. And then we have 1 and a half plus 2, that's 3.5, right? And this gives us an interval that contains the majority of the data, right? And not just the majority of the data. It's going to have no less than three quarters of the data, right? It has at least 75% of the data. So you could say anything outside of that is relatively unusual. And it looks like 4 and 5 are both outside of that on the number line, right? So at that point, you could say a value of 4 or 5 indicates values that should be considered relatively unusual. So the answer to the question is, would it be unusual to find four or more people in the sample of five people that have a bachelor's degree or higher? I would say yes for two reasons. One, the probability is very small, and perhaps that's the best reason because it's only you know 0.031, or in other words, 3.1% chance it seems, so that makes it unlikely. And then of course, it falls outside of this interval, so that's another kind of rationale or reasoning to say, hey, it's relatively unlikely. Of course, if you have the probabilities, I think it's best to look at the specific probabilities. This is just a rule of thumb, and you might do that if you didn't have the probability distribution, but you just had the mean and standard deviation. You might do the mean plus or minus two standard deviations and say, hey, are the values they're asking about inside that interval or outside of it? If they're inside the interval, you would argue perhaps they're not unusual. If they're outside the interval, then you could argue perhaps they're unusual.